Hi there, welcome to this uh, behind the scenes of the recording session with the Northern Film Orchestra. I'm really excited to have you here. So what we're looking at right now is that the members of the orchestra, the choir are just arriving. Um, and something to understand that's really amazing about these studio musicians is that this is the very first time that they're seeing this music. So they get to their seats, they look at the music on their stand, and they're gonna rehearse uh, parts that stand out to them that they feel like they want to get under their fingers to prepare for the session. So that's what they're doing right now. So we ultimately are looking to record seven minutes worth of music within an hour and a half. So that's 45 minutes for each piece of music. So the way that the conductor approaches that is we do a, a, a full run through to rehearse, get the musicians familiar with the piece of music, and then we go back and record in chunks the different sections and make sure that we have good takes for each each section before moving on to the next section. And then at the very end, we do a final run through. One of the amazing things about this whole production, there's 60 people in the orchestra, there's a conductor, there's sound en engineer who positions all these 30 plus mics on the stage. Everybody's playing a role, but ultimately we are here for the musicians. We're here for their performance. And it's the job of the recording engineer, myself as the composer uh, and the conductor, to ensure that we give the musicians what they need to succeed and that we capture their performance. For me, going through this process, I mean, it's just a very humbling experience just to see all the work that goes into making something like this a reality. Great. Hi, everyone. Welcome back for those who were here just now and welcome to everybody that's new. We have our choir joining us up there, so hi, thanks for joining us. Hello, it's great. Um, before we begin, let me introduce to the composer, Eric, who's just who's flown over specially for this from the US. So, Eric. I want to say thank you all so much for being here and it's an honor for me to be here. This is the first time I'm hearing any of my music performed by a live orchestra, so. Very exciting for me, and I hope it's an enjoyable pace for you. And I'll head back in the booth and look forward to it. Thanks, Ed. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Okay. Great. We'll start with Escape. <coughs> Starting with Escape first. And as per usual, how we run this session is we're going to run through the whole piece, then work in chunks, and then run it again at the end. Okay? Great. Well read, well read. Uh, yeah, but I got I got all the scores back from the orchestrator. She made all the dynamic markings. Ooh. Yeah, so they're looking pretty good. I have to go, go over them all, through all the parts this weekend and make sure the performance of each line is correct according to the articulations and the dynamics for what I want. Yeah. And then get her any notes. Once that's done, all the music side of stuff, as far as my area is concerned, should be done. And I suppose some of this, you know, of course, could be open to interpretation, but... Yeah, I just want to see how you would interpret it, right, as, as right. a string player. I might actually put a dot there. On that one, okay. Yeah. Like, to make sure that it's, like, not this. Right, okay. If they sound as good as you, this is going to be great. So those are fakes. I'll take Turkish this fakes, uh, Turkish apricots. Mm. Yeah, and if you mix it, if you mix it with this, it'll probably take like mm. a fake Newton. Yeah, mm. that's true. 
But um, it's going to be really exciting, I think. We, last session we did was, well, we did two in July, didn't we, and two in August. So we had quite a busy two months there. Yeah. And then we've had like two months, yeah. like rest period before this one. In October yeah. you were thinking of doing Oh yeah, October, yeah, we just yeah. didn't do any of those. Okay. We basically just combined everyone into this. It's good period. because I session. wouldn't have been prepared for that date. Yeah. So. That was the one challenge with doing this, it's like, it's hard to... You have to have the wheels in motion like enough weeks ahead yeah. to make sure that everything is like, yeah, everything is you know, to pull off. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask what, what are you going to use this recording for? Is it for... Just a lifelong dream. Oh, right. Okay. You know, when I, when I started <laughs> composing when I was 14, as soon as I got to a point where I was able to hear things in my head and then write it, mm -hmm. that was the point at which I would be great to have an orchestra perform my stuff. But yeah, I wrote this in 2002. Oh, wow, okay. In college. That's great. And, uh, well, and, so, and then I got them orchestrated in 2010. I need to turn the orchestra this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a book that's been written 20 years ago. We need to do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. But normally, how, how, does the, how do you do the recording process? Do you like go through it once and then... Yeah, so I was, I was just going to talk to you about this because the plan for both pieces is I'll run, run through it mm -hmm. and then I'll, we'll record in chunks. So we'll rehearse and record in chunks. Right. And then after that, we run through the whole piece again and that should finish that session for the piece. So the run through at the end is probably the, the one we'll use. So one thing I was th thinking about ranges, especially in the brass, mm -hmm. in the trumpets, I have them going up to this high note, right? In bar 49. Do you think the players are going to have an issue with that? The top D. Yeah. The, the player we have on first trumpet. Is incredible. Okay. So, okay. Um, another question I had, just in the timpani part, it's one thing writing a timpani for samples, but then when you're actually imagining, okay, this guy's gonna have three drums, yeah. you may have to be tuning them. So, uh, starting bar twenty-seven. The worry is that when if you change the pedal for one of them between the F, let's say he changed. You yeah. use this on one drum, and then you know the first two bars you use that on one right. drum, and the next two drums. Then you might get a glitz, bum 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 right. bum 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 bum, because he's it, it, adjusting before he gets. Sometimes we can just isolate that four bars and repeat it until we get it. <laughs> yeah. We can use that. If right. We really need it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. The first chunk we'll be working on is bar one to twenty-six. Starting on bar two, can we just have the strings? And just make sure we're all doing long crotchets when we get there. Okay, some of us are still playing it too short. That's lovely. Next thing is, can we just jump to bar 12, please? Bar 12, just all the strings again. And here. That's, that's all good, thank you. Great. Uh, until 26. Yep. Last thing is, can we just have bar 24, please? Bar 25. Just the strings. Again, 25. It's just when we change from quaver, semi quavers to triplets. Make sure those are very clear. Okay. And. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, from the top all the way to bar 27, please, everybody. Thank you. Good, shall we move on? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, next thing, can we just have bar 27, cello bass, bassoon, and viola as well? Yeah, same, same thing, so kick out the semi quiver. Ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, yeah. Three, and... Yeah, that's so much better, yeah. 
Actually, Melvin, I have a note from Eric. Yep. He's saying that he's a little bit concerned about the togetherness for about the brass in bar 23, 24, 25, and 26. Sure, yeah, that's, that's fine. Great. Can we just have the brass, bar 20? Yeah. Just mezzo forte is fine. We just need to make sure it's together. And the, the horns, it got a lot better at the end, but the first bar, make sure the triplets are triplets. It was a bit late, but after that, it was great. Do we ask also the choir to, you know, just... Uh, how do you say that? Just, just hold all her arms in the middle. Yeah. Oh, can you move closer to that middle microphone, please? Thank you. Yeah. Let's do another take from 61 to the end, please. After we've recorded everything we need from the orchestra, we move on to the comping session. And here we start by listening to the final run through. And as we're listening, we identify any areas that could be better. And then we listen to all the chunks and choose the best takes that address the problems we found. Next, we splice them into the final recording. And in the end, we have one recording which combines all the best takes from the day. Something in the horns at the beat. beat of 54. Yeah, it's like a blip, 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 blip. Yeah, there's yeah. no trumpets, yeah. It's trumpet, is yep. it? What, I, I, I think it's just one of the trumpets. One yeah. of the trumpets missed the note, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's amazing that you can do this. Yeah, I'm always amazed that you can just like <laughs> stitch them and they seem to work, but I guess it... A testament to the musician, I guess. Well, it's a testament to a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in general, you... Yeah, yeah uh, there was something I want to re-listen to in the beginning. Right there. Can you... Can you uh, isolate... Is it a Hans? I think I know the I think so. Yeah, it's that note. Bit, it's a little bit wonky. It's just tuning really, um, yeah, or hitting the same note voice without. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, it's two really nice pieces. I'm excited to mix these now. I like to spend a day and a half on a track mm. uh, as like a first draft, and then I'll send you that to listen to and gather notes. After we have our comp produced, we're ready to start the process of mixing. When we recorded the orchestra, we had over 30 mics positioned around the space to record the sound at different places. And these microphones fall into four categories. We have spot mics, which are the closest to the sections of the orchestra. They pick up the really intimate sounds and the signature sounds of those instruments. And then we have uh, main mics, which sit above the conductor. We have room mics and we have outrigger mics, which sit at the front of the stage. The um, main mics, the room mics, and the outriggers are designed more to pick up the sound of not only the instruments and how the sounds of the instruments interact with each other, but how those sounds are moving through the space. So here we have all of the recorded sounds from one take, and we can see here we have the room mics, the main mics, the outriggers, and then all of these tracks are the sounds recorded from the spot mics. So if we listen to, say, just the brass. You can hear that there is a lot of detail in there about the instruments themselves. You hear the raspiness of the trombones. You hear the brightness of the trumpet. Now, when we turn on the uh, main mics along with the spot mic, you hear a difference. So some of the details are softened a bit. You don't hear them as vividly, but also what's added is you hear how that sound is interacting with the space. There's a resonance. And so let's listen to another section. Here we have the piccolos. So you really hear those trills in the piccolos very clearly on the spot mic. 
But again, when we add um, the room mics, the main mics, and the outriggers. So you still hear the trill, but it's a little bit lower in the mix as there's a lot of other sound going on. And um, in this particular situation, in the process of mixing, we decided to bring up the spot mic of the trills in the mix so that we could hear them more clearly. So now I'll share some examples of the mixing process, which include the audio before the mixing happened and after the mixing was done. So I just have uh, these notes for escape. So make that a little, just a little bit louder. These next ones um, are all trumpets bringing the volumes down. Like all of these places, I still want the trumpet to be prominent, but I think it's a little bit too prominent. Let's, let's do a full run of this here. Great. A full run of this from the beginning, please. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, it's really lovely to have you guys here. Thank you. Yeah. The moment when I can hear you, it sounds amazing. <laughs>
Great, lovely, well done, thank you. Really nice. Really nice. Yeah, I have a special mood on that when you guys bring me cry. Yeah, Eric said you guys made him cry. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> Clear ceiling, please. Actor, sorry, do you mind playing the notes for the... Just... Just start, show the starting note for them, yeah? Okay. Clear ceiling from the start. Thank you. So lovely. I think yeah. We've got everything we, we needed. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We've got everything we needed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much for watching. And um, a big thank you to Jack, Melvin, Simeon, Nicolo, and all the musicians of the Northern Film Orchestra. I'm very proud of what we've created together and so grateful to everyone for contributing their gifts. Um, and a special thank you to Susie, uh, who, in addition to being the orchestrator, was a coach and sometimes a therapist and really a vital support to me in realizing this dream. And I could not have done it without her. So thank you. And um, also, I'm excited to announce that we've started work on another recording session scheduled for the summer of 2022. And for this, I've selected nine compositions, each of which have a special significance to me. Um, and in total, we'll be recording over 30 minutes of music. So extremely excited and grateful to have the opportunity to go through this process again. And looking forward to sharing with you about it. And I'll be posting behind the scenes videos on my Patreon during every stage of the process. And if you head over there now, you'll find more behind the scenes videos from this session, including a fly on the wall video, which covers the entirety of the recording session uh, with multiple camera angles. And it's really fun to watch if you want to take a deeper dive into how these pieces were recorded. Um, it means a lot to me to have a community to share and collaborate with as I go on this journey. And so if you would like to follow along and support me, the link to my Patreon is below this video, so you can go check it out. Also, the audio recordings for Escape and Clear Sailing are available on Spotify and iTunes, and the links to those are also below. So that's it. And again, thank you so much for joining. Bye.